Hi everyone, in this video I will explain the parameters on the front panel of the 8480 Reverb Rack extension. To do so I have loaded the Dr. Octorex with an acoustic drums loop. Let's start with the three black faders on the left side. With size you adjust the perceived room size, which mainly is determined by the room's first reflection pattern. Let's hear how it sounds. The second parameter is reverb length. Reverb length determines how hard the walls of the virtual room reflect sound. The third parameter is dimension. Dimension influences the virtual room size without changing its first reflection pattern. The next parameter is pre-delay and it is well known from most other reverbs. It delays the input signal before further reverb processing. The 8480 reverb consists of two mono reverb units. If you send for example audio to the left input only, then only the left channel will contain reverb after processing. Crossfeed is a function that lets you adjust the directional behavior of the 8480 reverb for cases where the audio event or signal is not situated in the stereo center at the input. It feeds audio from the left input to the right reverb unit and vice versa. It sits directly after pre-delay and before the mono reverb units. With the fader crossfeed you can adjust the level of the crossfeed signal and with the fader cross delay you can add an additional delay to it. To make it work you first have to switch it on. Then you decide the level of the crossfeed signal. If this fader is at maximum, you are sending left plus right to both mono reverb units. Let's hear how it sounds. Since the drum loop is almost mono, we only hear a change in the reverb level when switching on and off crossfeed. Let's check out what happens if the drum loop is coming from the left side only. Let me disconnect the right input on the back panel. As you can hear the original signal is audible only on the left channel, while the reverb is sounding on both left and right. To hear it better I will change the mix balance. Let's play a bit with a crossfeed fader and listen to the reverb's behavior. Adjusting the crossfeed fader enables you to control the directional behavior of the 8480 reverb in the level domain. The cross delay fader also gives you control about the time domain for this function. As you can hear, it is possible to perfectly control the reverb's behavior for complex or moving stereo signals. The button crossface L inverts the phase of the signal coming from the right input and going to the left reverb unit. The button crossface R does the same vice versa.
As you could hear, there's almost no reverb on the left channel. Because the drum loop is almost mono and the cross delay is at 0 milliseconds, the original signal from the left input and the phase inverted cross feed signal from the right input are cancelling each other out. It doesn't seem to make much sense that way, but let's change cross delay. Having some cross delay and inverting the phase on one channel did increase stereo width and change the sonic character of the reverb tail. The next function is dry distance. Its purpose is to sonically push the sound source into the virtual room by applying some delay and filter to the dry signal. The delay is compensated in the reverb algorithm, so no real delay is actually occurring to the dry signal. At 0.0, .0 the sound source is positioned right in front of the listener, while at 1.0 it is at the back end of the room. To demonstrate it I move the dry distance fader to the maximum and use the button for AB comparison. The next parameter is spread. Spread simply determines the stereo width of the reverb. 0 means mono, 0 0.5 means full stereo and values above 0 0.5 are typically used only for special effects. Now to the filters. There are two kinds of filters built into the 8480 reverb. First there are the cumulative filters which are used to shorten the reverb time for high and low frequencies and then there are the cut filters which sit in the chain after the reverb units. To demonstrate the effect of the cumulative filters which are represented here by these four faders I will move the faders to neutral positions. With these fader positions the cumulative filters have no effect. The first two faders adjust the high damp filter which shortens the reverberation time for high frequencies. With one fader you adjust the cutoff frequency and with the other the amount of dampening. Let's listen to the effect of the low damp filter which also has two faders, one for the cutoff frequency and one for the dampening amount. Now to the last two faders representing the cutoff frequencies of the high cut filter and the low cut filter. Unlike any other reverb unit, the 8480 reverb has two kinds of bypass. One is called in bypass and the other out bypass. In bypass cuts the signal at the input of the reverb, letting fade out the reverb tail naturally. Out bypass mutes the signal after the reverb, but internal processing continues.
Thanks for watching and have fun with the 8480 Reverb Rack extension.